Okay, so welcome to a new guide on this channel, and this occasion is going to be the PO14, the sub one. So this is not a review, this is a complete guide about this device. Now everything on this video, it's in chapters. So if you look at the description or maybe the timeline, you can jump uh, to sections or maybe you can skip the ones you don't want. So of course, if you like this, please like and subscribe. And if you have the money, uh, you can buy me a coffee, why not? Everything is on the description. Okay, so let's just begin. So all the pocket operators kind of belong to the same family. So some of the functionalities are just going to be the same. But I'm going to be assuming that this is your first pocket operator. So I'm just going to deep dive into every single little thing. So first, I'm going to give you a global usage so you can just, you know, use it on the go in a, in a couple of minutes and then begin to deep dive on each section. OK, so first you need to know, of course, maybe you already know, this works like a sequencer. You have 16 steps from one till, uh, you know, 16. Uh, you have 16 types of bases, including, uh, you know, maybe 15 in this case. The 16 is a rhythm that we are going to be talking about uh, later. Uh, you have 16 patterns that you can uh, create. You have 16 effects and you have 16 styles that you can use to create variations to whatever pattern that you create. So right from the start, you have 15 uh, different types of basses, you know, bass sounds. And the number 16, the 16 one, is going to be a percussive sound. We're going to talk about that later. But for now, we have 15. So how can you listen to different uh, basses? So make sure that you're not in reg mode. Notice that it says reg right there. You need to tap the right one and it's just going to be off. And then you, by holding the sound, you're going to need to maybe go to the first one and then you're going to be able to hear different pitches of the first bass. Now, if you won't go to the second one, that's going to be the second one. If I go to the third, that's going to be the third and so on and so on and so on. And if you go to the 15, that's going to be the sound of the bass. And on the 16 is a percussive part that we can use to create some, some you know, some uh, percussive sounds behind the bass. But yeah, you need to hold the sound and tap whatever step that you want in order to get that bass sound. So you have 15 or 16 different sounds. You also get patterns. So uh, by factory, you know, from factory, you already have rhythms right here, just patterns all kind of already kind of ready to go. So if you go to the pattern, you have 16s. So notice the blinking one. So this is going to be the selected pattern and you can host 16. So right now it's on the pattern number one. The only thing that you need to do is you need to do play. And that's the maze. You know, that's the pattern. All right, so how can you change patterns? You're gonna go and hold the pattern and you're just gonna maybe tap on a different pattern and that's gonna be the number six or maybe, I don't know, the number five. That's gonna be the number five. And that's how you can change patterns. All right, now of course you can change the BPM of whatever pattern. Let's go to the first one. The first one is just a little bit more normal. So you can change the BPM of your uh, pocket operator. So right here says BPM. By just tapping it, you have three kind of a predefined uh, BPMs, which is going to be a techno, it's 140. Then you have uh, hip hop, it's going to be 80. And then the other one is going to be disco and it's 120 BPM. Now this doesn't mean that you cannot change the BPM. You can go to BPM, hold that button, and with this one, you're going to be able to select your BPM. All right, so pretty simple. So the A and the B knobs are uh, pretty special on the sub. They can do a lot of things. And in this case, they can change how the sound, uh, you know, sounds, and then they can change the length and the pitch of the sound. So if right now we, if I, you know, we are not in play mode and we are not in rec mode. If I play something, that's my bass sound. Now, if I go to this one, and hold it. Notice that this is changing. And if I go to the A and go all the way down, it's just much shorter. But this is like kind of a changing the envelope of the sound. Now, maybe you're thinking, OK, so it's going to do the same on all the different bases. Well, since you have, uh, you know, all the bases are just way different, what the A and B is just going to be a little bit different. If I go to sound and select the number three, this one is more like like an FM bass. So if I go to sound again or I just, you know, go again, select that one and I play it, notice that this one 
It's just gonna change in a different way. And this one is just like the A is gonna kind of a changing the ratios because this is an FM bass. And this one is kind of more kind of a kind of a like a feedback, let's say. So yeah, all the different bases in terms of the A and the B uh, controls are gonna be doing something else, uh, something different to each of the sounds. So if your pocket operator, the volume is just too low, you can go and hold the BPM. And right here, notice it says that it's on five. So that is the volume. So if I, maybe it's too low for me right now, I'm gonna go and just make it louder. Notice that it's gonna go much louder. In this case, maybe this one is good for me. So that's the way you can adjust the volume. So maybe you're a little bit new to pocket operators and you're kind of a, a little bit confused about the lights that you have right here whenever you select the pattern or maybe when you do play. So all the pocket operators, they, they work, uh, you know, a little bit different. In the case of the sub one, all the lights that are on when you're using a pattern, this means that this step is kind of a taking by a bass sound. So if I play, that step has a bass. And this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one too. Now, the light that is going at the back is telling you where the progression is, you know, in which step you are. Starts on 1 and always ends on 16. Pretty simple. So if you're a little bit worried about the battery, uh, the battery life, all the POs, the pocket operators, uh, will go off after five minutes if you're not using the, uh, the the jack right here. Now, if you're using it and uh, you know it's connected and you're not using your pocket operator, it will go off or maybe on standby after 16 minutes. So you need to know that the LCD will always stay on. This consumes very little battery, so you don't need to worry about this, but the lights will go off. Now, to know how much battery you have left, you need to hold sound and BPM at the same time, and it will tell you how much battery you have left. Now, of course, if battery is a problem for you, maybe getting some rechargeable batteries is a good idea, but this doesn't consume that much. If you use it the whole time, well, yeah, it will consume, uh, but if you don't use it that much, when the lights go off, it will consume very little battery. Okay, so now we need to talk about creating patterns and just using the tools we have available to create a pattern because that's, you know, what the pocket operator is all about. So uh, right from the start, the pattern number one, you have the factory pattern. Of course, you can go and edit that one, but maybe what we want is to start from the scratch. So I'm gonna go right here and select a uh, key and then go to pattern and that will clear whatever pattern you had selected. Since this one was selected, now it's cleared. So if I do play, we have nothing, right? If I go maybe to the second one on the second pattern, we have that. And if I hold key and pattern, that one is gone. We have nothing, right? So in this case, it's just gonna go back to the number one, right? Just gonna make sure we are on the number one. There we go. So to record the pattern, of course, you need to select the sound that you want. In this case, this is gonna be my bass. Now, you need to always remember when you manually create the, uh, the, the, the sequence, the A and the B will really, really matter because that is gonna get, it's gonna be recorded on each step that you add. So in this case, this is gonna be my bass, right? So how can we add this bass to the steps, to all, to all the steps we have right here? So you're gonna need to go to right. So whenever you do right, you enable uh, the kind of a step sequencer mode. So in this case, it's going to be uh, waiting for you to add something to each step on the sequence. Since it knows that we are using that base, it's just going to go and add it. So I'm going to go and maybe add it right here and add it right here. But now I want to change what is going on right here on the A and the B. So I'm going to go out of the B of the rack mode. And I'm just going to maybe just make it a little bit different so we can uh, kind of uh, see the difference and I'm going to be going back to the rack mode. I'm going to add it here. I'm going to add it here. I'm going to go out and then I go back there and we can ch we can change all of this live or maybe a little bit easier when we uh, talk about the uh, the uh, live recording and then I'm going to maybe add something, uh, go back to the rack mode. I'm going to go and add it there and then add it right there. And now notice that when we do this, uh, if you take a look at the A and the B, it's going to start moving because of course we use different values. So if I do play, we get it. Now we don't need to be on rec anymore. Right. So that's it. That's how you add the different sounds here. 
Now, of course, you cannot avoid uh, noticing that the pitch of the bass, it's always the same. It's A on all the steps. How can you, uh, you know, change the pitch? So that's the secondary function of the A and the B knob. This one is going to change the pitch and this one is going to change the length. Now, before we do that, of course, if you're on write mode, it means that you can add steps, but also you can remove them. So if I go here and remove the steps, they are gone and we have nothing, right? So I'm going to go back and I'm going to go right here. I'm going to leave the right and I'm just going to add it to the one and add it to the number four, step number four. If I play it, it's just going to sound like that, right? So pretty simple. Right, so how can we change the pitch of this ones and the length as well? Because that's the secondary function. All right, so I'm going to go to rack mode. When we are in rack, what we can do, we can go to this step and whenever we hold it, notice at the top, and I kind of I'll move this, notice at the top, it's telling you, dude, that's the C, it's not an A. And this one is a C, right? So again, what you can do is go right here and change the pitch. If you go all the way down or maybe all the way up, you're going to be able to change the pitch. And the other one is going to be the length. For now, we're going to be changing the pitch. I'm going to make it an A and this one is going to be an A, but it's going to be maybe an, a lower A or something like that. And then we do play. We get it. So that's the function of the A, changing the pitch. Now what we can do, we can go and change the length. So, of course, it means that if uh, this one will last one step, if we make it longer, it will last more. It's just going to be sustaining. The note is just going to kind of sustain for more steps. So if I go right here and hold it, I'm going to be moving this. This one is the length. Now, while I'm doing so, notice it's just kind of a turning the lines on. This means how long this will be. It's going to be one, two, three, or maybe four steps. So if I leave it like that, this note is going to be super long or maybe four steps long. And if I do the same for the other one, maybe I'm going to make it, uh, you know, twice as longer. Now, of course, you need to know that maybe if I go to rec mode and I add a step right here, this one is going to choke this one, right? This one will not, uh, you know, last four. Now it's going to last two because this one is choking it. So if I do play. There we go. All right. So what happens if I want to change the other thing, you know, how the bass sounds and not the pitch and the length. So I'm going to go out of the rec mode. And if I play, of course, this is going to just sound like that. Now, what we can do, we can hold rec and this is going to work on play. I can going to hold and I'm holding the rec. So when you move this, and you're going to kind of leave it on a place steady like that. You hold that one for the whole duration of the 16 steps and you're changing, you know, the A and B for the whole sequence. And there you go. That's how you can change it. But you need to hold the right. Now, other features just like this one, this what what this does behind the scenes is kind of a recording a motion or recording a, a motion sequence. So if I go to do the same thing and I go to right, but I start kind of a moving up and down this, this is just gonna record that motion, and then it's just gonna it's just gonna do it for you. Oh, sorry for that. And there you go. So behind the scenes, it's not like you are changing the A and the B for the whole bass. You're just kind of a recording the motion. Seems when, you, when, I, when I do the same thing and I move it and I leave it, uh, maybe go and leave it steady right here. It's just recording the same motion for all the steps. Right? But if you start moving it, it's just going to do that motion. This depends on, of course, of course, on what you want to do. Right. Now, of course, right now we have like the worst pattern ever. So if I go right there and maybe add some notes uh, right here, I don't know, let's do something like that. Something, you know, a little bit more fun. Right. So remember that in rec mode, you can go maybe right here and cha change the pitch and then maybe change the length. And you just can, you know, 
tailor this to whatever it is that you want to do. And right here you can, of course, on rec, you just can motion sequence the A and the B as much as you like. So what happens if you don't like, or maybe you like the sequence, but you don't like the sound of the bass? If you want to change it, so what do you want? What do you need to do? You need to clear the pattern, select a different bass, and start over. Not really. So the sequence that you create right here and the sound bass, or you know the whatever bass you select, is just a different thing. So if you do play and you go to sound and you maybe select a different bass, it's going to change, of course, the bass to the whatever other bass you have available. And of course, whatever we did on the A and the B is just kind of a change the vibe a little bit. Right. Now you get to sound 16 and this is kind of a weird name, but it's just how it sounds. I'm going to go and select the first one, right? The first one we know. This is our bass. Now the 16 is gonna be a, a percussive sound, but you just don't get one sound, you get many. So if I go to the 16 and select that one, you know, hold sound and then go to 16, notice that we get percussive elements. So what we can do, we can create uh, on the sequence, we can use this percussive uh, sounds and then add the bass at the top. Now the thing is that this doesn't work like, um, no, like a beat machine, like we would uh, use uh, the one I have right here. Just let me show you that they like this one, you know, the rhythm. It just works a little bit different, just works a little bit different. And it's because you cannot maybe put a kick and a snare and a hat on the same step. When I never use the 16, you just can use one per step. And now also, it's just a little bit weird uh, to program. So let me just kind of show you. So right now, I'm going to go to the pattern maybe number one. And I'm just going to kind of clear everything. So if I do play, I have nothing. So what I want to do, I want to go to sound and I want to use, uh, I want to use some uh, percussive, you know, sounds. I'm going to go to rec, you know, just like what we know how to do. We want to go to rec and add whatever it is that we want. So maybe I want something on this step. I want something on this one and this one and on this one. Now, when I do play, it will pretty much always be the same step. Maybe not the first one. And I'm going to tell you why in a second. So what is going on is that the PO cannot play many sounds on the same spot in terms of the, uh, you know, the step, the, 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 the uh, sound 16. Uh, so if you have a snare, a kick and a hat and you want to maybe, I don't know, play it on the same, on the first step, you cannot, you just can do one per step when you use the sound 16. Now in this case, when we add them, it's doing a kick and then it's doing the same sound. And I didn't do it on purpose, it's just kind of a, kind of a doing it. Now the thing is that you cannot uh, kind of uh, use it like the other, you know, the other PO. When you, when you add the step, you need to change the pitch in order to select which sound you want. You know, how can we change the pitch to adjust the sounds or just get something different? So we are not going to be playing in this case. I'm going to keep the rec on. It needs to be on. And then what we need to do is to do the same thing with it earlier to change the pitch of the bass. You're going to tap on that step and you're going to go right here and notice it at the top it says D for drum, I guess. And then when you change the number, it's just going to audition or give you all the different drum sounds that you have available or just percussive sounds. Right, so if I keep moving, right there we have the kick. So what we need to do is we just, you know, when we add, uh, when we create a sequence right here, we just need to go one by one and just changing the pitch or changing, in this case, whatever it is that we want to do. So I want to kick on all of this. So I'm going to do kick and a kick and it's going to be the 13. Right, so now if I do play, it's just going to be a kick, right? Pretty simple. So maybe I want to add hat. So I'm going to be on rec mode and I'm going to go out of the play and I'm going to add a hat right here. So if I do play, notice that we don't get hat. All right, so what we need to do is we need to go right here and the hat is going to be, is this, it sounds like hat, I guess. It's, you know, that one, that one, I don't know what that is. 
So we just need to do the same on the other ones until you create your percussive sequence and then you can record the bass on the top. Now, remember that the sound 16 is kind of a, an additional thing that you get. So you can, you know, have some something to do the bass on top. But it's always a little bit better if you, you use a different pocket operator uh, to kind of a feed or to sync the, uh, the, the beat right here to this one. We're going to talk about that later. Right. So, of course, this sounds like crap like this. What we can do, we can just go back to maybe select a different bass or maybe a bass. And let me go out of the record. And that's going to be the bass sound. So I'm going to go back to record and maybe just, I don't know, add some bass right there. Whatever. We're just doing this randomly. Right. Remember, we can hold and change the pitch when we hold it. To this one, we're going to be changing the other thing. And maybe we can do a little bit of motion sequence. All right, so pretty simple. Now, of course, we can do a lot more with this. All right, so we know the manual way of creating a sequence. Then you have the live, uh, the live recording. And live recording, it's just kind of a a bit easier once you know how this works and how you, you know how once you know how to edit your sequence now creating the sequence is pretty simple i'm going to go and select the first one and i'm going to do key and pattern so we just can clear everything now of course i'm going to be creating some drums uh i'm going to do it behind the scenes so you we don't you don't have to do it again because it's a little bit long we need to select the 16 and of course then i'm going to go right there and add some drums i'll go of course, this is not what we want. Right, so we have a kick on each one. And I'm going to add that uh, kind of hat. Okay, so this is my drum sequence. Now, how can we add this? How can we add bass sounds? Or how can we, we, you know, we can play live? So in this case, since we have a drum sequence, I'm going to go maybe to the bass number one. This is going to be the bass sound. You don't need to be on write mode to record something. But uh, to record it live, what you will need to do is to go to write and then hold it. Just press and hold. And then... And there you go. You just, you know... Record it. And that's it. That's pretty much. And everything we practice, you know, changing the pitch, the tone, and everything else will stick, will still, you know, work. So we can hold the uh, rec and change the params for this one. And there you go. That's the how the live recording works. This is pretty simple once you know the other way. All right, so we can do a little bit more, you know, because right now, if you think about this, it's just a little bit boring. So you have 16 different effects that you can use. And if you go to the manual or the documentation uh, on, on the, this PO, uh, you will find something that right there that says add effects and you can have a list. I'm going to put the list on the screen. So you have 16 steps right here. So, how can you add the effects? Okay, so the effects uh, section works just like when we uh, modulate or when we do the motion sequence with the A and the B, when we hold the right. This works the same way, but it's going to be working with effects sounds. Now, of course, you need to check the list in order to add the effects that you want. So, uh, how this works is that you need to go... And maybe well, we're gonna do it on play. Why not? It's the only way it works. You cannot do it with, uh, with manual sequence because this gets recorded while the sequence is going. This, you're recording that motion. Now the effects is gonna be the style. I know it sounds weird, but it's gonna be the style. So whenever you hold the style, remember that the, from one to sixteen, you can have sixteen different effects. So if you're holding this and and then you press a button, that one is going to get recorded at that point in time in the sequence. Now, if you're going on a fast tempo, like now, it's just going to be kind of a, you know, you could maybe make mistakes. Maybe I'm going to do, I don't know, something like that. And then you just, you know, can do a little bit of playing around with all the different effects. Now, of 
course, you have 16, and right now you, it's, it's completely up to you to do your exploration. Now, what happens if you don't like what all the effects, you know what you did, you, you just don't like it and you want to go back what you had from before. So remember, you are recording this on top, it's kind of a layer that sits on, sits on top. So if you do style, you're going to record nothing. So when you record nothing, you're going to get back to what, you know, to no effects. That's it. Okay, so then you have something called play styles. So just like the effects, you have different variations of uh, each of your steps. And they're they are just that, they're just variations. Now, if you go to the documentation, it doesn't say what you get, but when you start playing with them, you can just kind of hear or really, you know, hear what's going on. So how this works, it works just like the effects. While this is going, you're gonna be holding the key, this key, and then you're gonna tap one of the 16 different play styles that you have available. So I'm gonna go, and do my play. So remember, it works just like when we add effects with the style. And if I go to key, and maybe I do go to the, to the first one, notice it's kind of a change in the vibe. And yeah, it's just kind of a change how the sequence is being played. And if I do the same and I hold it, it's gonna be that vibe throughout the whole sequence. Now, just like the, uh, the effects, if you don't like it, you can hold it and go back to whatever you had from before. That's why this one is like the effects, is a layer that sits on top. Now, you can do a lot of things like that and we'll make a combination of different ones. That's a recall. <laughs> That's a little bit better. Or maybe... Alright, and if you don't like it, you just press and hold, and kaboom, it's gone. Same as the effects. Okay, so something that we can do with all the pocket operators, we can copy and we can chain patterns. Something pretty simple. Now, uh, let's say that we want to use three different patterns and we want to create a performance. So let's say I want to uh, do maybe two of the first pattern, then I want, I want to switch to the second one and I want to go to this one, but I don't want to do it manually. I don't want to hold pattern and just change it manually. So first, you, first of all, you kind of need to know how to copy paste and how, how to do it is pretty simple. So if I go to pattern number one, we have that drums, that percussive, you know, sound that we created earlier. And I'm gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be maybe selecting my sound. It's gonna be that one. So if I go to this, maybe I'm gonna do something like that, something very simple. All right, so how can we, you know, copy this one and paste it right here? So what you need to do, you need to make sure that this is the one you want to copy. So once you are sure, you write, you pattern at the same time, and then you select the pattern where you want to copy or the step that where you want to copy. So if I do pattern and I change that one and I play it, it's the same as the first one. So we just copy paste it. And if I do the same, I make sure that this one is the one selected and I want to copy this to this. I'm gonna do right pattern and just tap the third and I play and change one, change to the third and we have the same thing. Fine. So let's just pretend that we want to kind of create a, a progression or do something, something else. And I'm gonna do something simple. So let's say I want to go to the number two and the number two, we are, we are gonna do something else. Maybe, I don't know, I'm gonna do right, we are right. And I'm gonna just add more things right here, do something like that. Right, pretty simple. And okay, I'm gonna go right here, we are selecting the number two. I'm gonna copy this one and I'm gonna paste it to the number three. And if I go to the pattern number three and I play it, we have the same thing we have in the number two. But in this one, what I want to do, I want to do some effects. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Maybe something like that. Uh, okay, this one sounds like a bridge. So I'm gonna do that one. So this one is gonna be like a bridge. Let's just pretend. So now we have the pattern number one that starts like that. We have the second one, which is maybe like the verse. 
And then we have the third one, which is like the bridge, right? Pretty simple. So now what I want to do, I want to create a performance. I want to say, okay, I want to do twice. I want to play the sequence, the first one twice because it's an intro. Then the verse, I want to play it four times. And then the third one, I want to play it maybe uh, the bridge. I want to play it uh, twice, right? To do the sequence twice. So how can we do this? So this is pretty simple. You're going to need to go to the pattern and hold it. And once you do that, you're going to need to say, I want one, two, then I want four of the second one. So it's going to be one, two, three, four. And I want two of the bridge. So one, two. So PO can chain up to 16 of this. So if I do play, it's going to be one, two, and then goes to the next one. One, two, three, four, bridge. One, two, and goes back to the beginning and repeats the whole chain over again. So doing something like this, you can create a performance. So copy pasting and chaining patterns, uh, you can create a performance. Maybe you want to start with something like that and then kind of have a progression through different patterns. Now, what if you don't want this or maybe you want to erase whatever we did right here, all this chaining patterns. So you can go to pattern and just tap this you know, 16 times, and it's gonna be always the first one, because remember, you can change up the chain up to 16. So if I do play, it's always gonna be the first one, and it will never go to the other ones, because we are overridden this. All right. Okay, so let's talk about syncing uh, pocket operators. Right now, right here, I have my trusty rhythm uh, pocket operator. So what I want to do, I want to sync to this one. So the, I want this to be my slave and this one to be my master one. So every time that I do play, this one should be doing play. So we want to sync. So all the pocket operators, they have an out and they have an in and both are stereo. Now all pocket operators are mono. They are not able uh, to give you stereo, a stereo signal, even though they are stereo. Now, the, you get mono, a mono in and a mono out, I'm sorry, a stereo in and a stereo out, and it's because you have two channels, you have the left and the right. So the left, when you're syncing, is going to be uh, maybe outputting the, the sound that comes out of this, but on the right channel, uh, you're going to get the sync. Uh, yeah, you're gonna, it's going to be syncing to the other uh, pocket operator. Now, how can you, you know, just check how can you sync? So all the pocket operators have five sync modes. So how can you check which sync mode? So if you go to the manual, it will tell you right there uh, when you change the mode, what it's doing to the in and what is going to do to the out. How can you check it right here? So what you need to do is you need to go to key, you need to hold it and then go right here to the BPM and when you tap it, it's going to say SI for sync zero and then sync one and you get five modes. But on this one, you just get two. You get the zero. Uh, actually, you get six modes because it's from zero to five. But on this one, you get two. You get zero and you get one. And it's because nothing is connected to the in. And all the other modes work when you have something syncing in right here. So I'm going to bring my trusty uh, cable and I'm just going to connect this pocket operator to this one. Right. So once I do so uh, and I go right here and do it again, notice that we get two, three, four, five and then back to zero. So we get more options. And it's because, of course, this one could be uh, the middle of the chain or maybe this one could, this one could be first on the change uh, chain and this could be the master and the rest ones are going to be the slave. I'm going to be following the BPM of this one. So uh, depends on where this one is on the chain or what you're going to do, you want to do is the sync mode that you need to select. So in my case, this one is going to be the master. This one is going to be outputting some drums. It's going to go through this one. So this one needs to receive some sound of the drums. And then this one is going to go to my, uh, you know, my, uh, my sound card. So I need those drums. So we need to select something that lets the pocket operator receive sound from this one and then output it right here. But we also need to receive a sync from this one. Whatever this BPM is going to be, or whenever this one is playing, this one needs to play as well. 
So we need to go to the sync mode and now you need to go to the manual and ch change, check uh, which sync mode is, uh, you know, is, suits you better. So in this case, I'm going to go right here. I'm going to do one, two, three, four. So I'm going to be selecting the four. Now the four is out stereo and the in is going to be mono and sync. And it's mono because we are receiving the sound. It's sync uh, because we are receiving the sync from this operator. And then the out, since this is not going to a different uh, pocket operator, it's stereo. Uh, you know, it's going out to my sound card. Pretty, pretty simple. Now, of course, since this one now is trying to sync to this one, we need to make sure that this one is on the right mode as well. This one needs to output a sync. And right now, if I go and do it on this one, on the rhythm, it says that the mode, it's the number one. Now, if you go to the manual and we check what sync one is going to be, it's going to be an in of stereo. We don't care about that right now, but the output is going to be mono. This one needs to receive that. Sorry, kind of, sorry, I bumped the camera and it needs to receive a sync. So this one on SI1 on sync one, it's going to be doing just that. And notice that we get two options, zero and one, because we are not, we don't have an input right here. So one is the one we want. It's outputting a sync. This one is going to be synced and then everything is going to work. All right. So if I go to this one and I do some playing, notice that we get the drums. It's kind of a little bit low in volume. Let me just go up. So we get the drums from the rhythm one, but we don't get anything from the bass, from the sub. And right now I'm going to go maybe select the pattern number one and I'm going to clear that pattern because we have some percussive sounds right there as well. And just, you know, just to do something quick, I'm going to go to right and just going to do whatever. It doesn't matter. This is just, you know, just to test it. But, you know, we are doing play right here and this is synced, but we don't get a sound. Now, in order for this one to start to kickstart that one, uh, the, 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 the uh, slave one, you need to be on play. But when you do play, it's not playing. But notice that it says, uh, let me get out of the wreck. It says play, but it's just going to be pause and it's just kind of a blinking. And it's because it's a standby or it's a waiting for this one to trigger this one. So if I do play. We get the drums from this one. Let me make it louder. And this one, I'm just going to adjust the volume just a little bit. And when you sync operators, you just always need to kind of a manually uh, manage the volumes. And there you go. You're just syncing. If I stop on this one, it's going to stop on this one as well. And if I play back, it's going to start over. Super cool. All right. Right, so one more thing with the sync uh, that I kind of need to tell you, maybe you didn't know. Uh, whenever you use sync, maybe you're wondering, oh, okay, I, I, I can use a pocket operator just to send the sync to some other synthesizer, like, I don't know, a DeepMind or maybe a Hydra synth or whatever it is that you're using. Maybe not the Hydra because that thing can do so much, but maybe a more analog kind of a synthesizer. Uh, let me just give you an example, a Crave uh, or uh, a, grand, a grandmother from Moog or whatever. Something that needs a sync in order to kind of, a, you know, sync to something else. So this one, the output of the sync, it's very, very weak. It's one volt and it's because it uses its batteries. You just so you cannot use this one to sync uh, or to trigger sync, maybe a different synthesizer because a different synthesizer is going to be awaiting maybe for a different voltage. And usually it's uh, above three volts or maybe, yeah, three volts and something like that. So this one is super, super weak. So you cannot use it for that unless it goes through a kind of a tiny amplifier that you can get if you, depends on where you live, uh, you can get uh, on the web. You can go to eBay and just buy the amplifier that is going to be from one volt to maybe three volts or something like that. And then you can use it as a sync to uh, to sync it uh, to, you know, maybe other synthesizers. OK, so hopefully uh, you like this one and you learned something new. Maybe you learned how to use your pocket operator right now. And uh, and that's it. You know, that's pretty much it. Now, everything else is completely up to you. Now, remember, of course, to like and subscribe if you uh, like the video. And if you have the money and you can afford it, uh, you can check Patreon. Maybe check the link, link uh, links in the description. You can maybe buy me a coffee through PayPal or maybe YouTube Thanks. Or again, go to Patreon and maybe just be a one month patron and that, you know, will help. It's all right. So hopefully you like this one and you learned something new and see you on the next one.